हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरान ने फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चैनल टीच इजी इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द एम सी क्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक लिमिट स्टेट ऑफ कोलैप्स फॉर शेयर एंड बॉन्ड सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग द टाइम लेट अस स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन द मैक्सिमम शेयर स्ट्रेस इन कॉन्क्रीट of grade m25 in mpa is a 3.5 b 3 c 3.1 and d 2.8 now according to is 456 2000 the shear stress in the concrete is limited to a maximum value so as to avoid the compression failure and from is 456 you can see that the maximum shear stress in concrete of grade m25 is 3.1 mpa hence the correct answer of this is c 3.1 question number 2 the characteristic strength in mpa of stirrup reinforcement shall not exceed a 250 b 415 C five hundred and D none of the above. Now, when we are using the reinforcement, the bar which we are using for stirrups, the grade of that is limited to four one five as per IS four fifty six. Hence, the correct answer of this question is B four one five newton per mm square. Question number three. the cracks due to shear are a inclined b horizontal c vertical and d none of the above the correct answer of this is the cracks which are developed due to shear are inclined hence the answer is a inclined question number 4 the shear strength of solid concrete slab is a equal to design shear strength of concrete b less than design shear strength of concrete c greater than design shear strength of concrete and d none of the above now we know that as the thickness of the slab is small the design shear stress as far as slab is concerned is k times tau c and the value of k for lower thickness is less than 150 mm is 1.3 so it means that that particular strength will be greater than design shear strength of concrete hence the correct answer of this question is c greater than design shear strength of concrete question number 5 if the design ultimate shear stress in the beam is less than design shear strength of concrete then a beam requires shear reinforcement b no shear reinforcement is required c cross section of the beam is to be revised and d none of the above now in this particular question the shear stress which is induced due to loading is less than the shear strength of concrete therefore tau v is less than tau c hence no shear reinforcement is required in this case hence the correct answer is b no shear reinforcement is required question number 6 the spacing of vertical stirrup shall not exceed a 0.75 d b d c 300 mm and d lesser of a and c now according to is 456 we know that the spacing of vertical stirrup shall not exceed 0.75 d or 300 mm whichever is less hence the correct answer of this question is d lesser of a and c question number 7 the spacing of nominal vertical stirrups that is minimum shear reinforcement shall not exceed a fy into asv upon 0.4 b b fy into asv upon b c 0.87 fy asv upon 0.4 b and d 0.87 fy asv upon 
D. Okay. The correct answer nominal shear reinforcement shall not exceed 0.87 Fy ASV upon 0.4 B. Hence, the correct answer is C. 0.87 Fy ASV upon 0.4 B. Question number 8. The spacing of inclined stirrup shall not exceed A. 0.75 D, B. D, C. 300 mm and D. Lesser of B and C. This is similar problem to the previous one regarding the vertical stirrups and as the stirrups are inclined here, their spacing shall not exceed D or 300 mm whichever is less. Hence, the correct answer is D lesser of B and C. Question number 9. The ultimate shear resisted by a vertical stirrup is A 0.87 Fy into ASV into D upon SV B Fy into ASV into D upon SV C 0.87 Fy into ASV upon 0.4 B and D none of the above. Now the ultimate shear that is resisted by vertical stirrup is given by 0.87 Fy ASV into D upon SV. Hence the correct answer is option A 0.87 Fy into ASV into D upon SV. Question number 10. The ultimate shear resisted by inclined stirrup is A. 0.87 Fy ASV into D upon SV B. 0.87 Fy into ASV into D into sin alpha upon SV C. 0.87 Fy into ASV upon 0.4 B and D none of the above. Now as far as inclined stirrups are concerned the inclination is angle alpha so only option B contains sin alpha hence the correct answer of this is B 0.87 Fy ASV into D upon into sin alpha upon SV. Question number 11. The maximum shear resisted by bent up bar is limited to A 0.8 VUS, B 0.4 VUS, C 0.5 VUS and D 0.6 VUS. Now when we are providing the bent up bars to resist the shear, it is given in IS 456 that the shear resisted by bent up bar is limited to 50% of VUS that is 0.5 VUS. Hence the correct answer of this is C 0.5 VUS. Question number 12. The bond strength of 12 tor bar is dash dash the bond strength of 10 tor bar. A more than B less than C equal to and D none of the above. Now you know that the bond strength decreases as the diameter of the bar increases. Hence the bond strength of 12 tor bar will be less than the bond strength of 10 tor bar. Hence the correct answer is B less than. Question number 13. The bond strength of 12 tor bar is dash dash the bond strength of 16 tor bar A more than B less than C equal to and D none of the above. Again here 12 tor is less than 16 tor hence the bond strength will be more hence the correct answer is A more than. Question number 14. The design shear stress in a beam depends on A grade of concrete B grade of steel C grade of concrete and percentage of tension steel and D water cement ratio. If you see the table given in IS 456-2000, you will find that that value of design shear stress depends upon grade of concrete and percentage area of steel provided in tension. Hence, the correct answer of this question is C, grade of concrete and percentage of tension steel. Question number 15. The bond strength of 12 phi bar is dash 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 the bond strength of 12 tor bar a more than b less than c equal to d none of the above now here bond strength of 
same diameter of mild steel and tar steel is compared so definitely the bond strength of tar steel is more therefore here the bond strength of 12 5 bar will be less than the bond strength of 12 tar bar hence the correct answer is b less than Question number 16. The lap length for a bar of diameter 5 in flexural tension is A. 30 phi, B. 24 phi, C. LD and D greater of A and C. Now for flexural tension the lap length should be 30 phi or LD whichever is greater. Hence, the correct answer of this question is D greater of A and C. Question number 17. The lap length for the bar of diameter phi in flexural compression is A 30 phi, B 24 phi, C LD and D greater of B and C. Now, for flexural compression, the lap length should be 24 phi or LD whichever is greater hence the correct answer of this question is D greater of B and C. Question number 18. The anchorage value of a 90 degree bend is dash 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 A 4 phi B 16 phi C 8 phi and D 10 phi. Now the anchorage value is taken as 4 phi for every 40 degree bend. Now as it is 90 degree bend 4 phi into 2 that is 8 phi is correct answer. So the correct answer is C 8 phi. Question number 19. The force which prevents the relative displacement between concrete and steel is known as A shear force B push C tensile force and D bond. Now, this is the definition of the bond. The force which prevents the relative displacement between concrete and steel is known as bond. Hence, the correct answer is D bond. Question number 20. The longitudinal shear stress acting on the surface between concrete and steel is known as A. Shear stress B. Bending stress C. Bond stress and D. Tensile stress. Now this is the definition of bond stress that is the longitudinal shear stress acting on the surface between concrete and steel is known as bond stress. Hence the correct answer of this question is C bond stress. Question number 21. The length required to develop the stress in the bar by transfer of stress from concrete to the steel is known as A anchorage length B development length C cutoff length and D none of the above. Now the length which is required to develop the stress for transferring stress from concrete to the steel is known as development length and the correct answer is B development length. Question number 22. The bond between concrete and steel is developed due to A adhesion B friction C bearing and D all the above. Now here in this question adhesion is the attraction between the particles of different materials. Friction you already know, bearing you already know and the bond which is developed between steel and concrete is due to all of them. Hence the correct answer of this question is D all the above. Question number 23. The length required to transfer the stress in the bar to the surrounding concrete through the bond is known as A. Anchorage length, B. Development length, C. Cutoff length and D. None of the above. Now we know that anchorage bond is the stress developed for transferring the stress in the bar to the surrounding concrete and the length which is required for this one is known as anchorage length. Hence, the correct answer of this is A anchorage length. Question number 24. The ratio of development length LD to the diameter of bar phi is known as 
ए एंकरेज फैक्टर बी कट ऑफ फैक्टर सी डेवलपमेंट लेंथ फैक्टर एंड डी नन ऑफ द अबो नाउ एल डी यू नो द फॉर्म्यूला ऑफ एल डी इज पॉइंट एटी सेवन एफ वाई इन टू फाइव अपॉन फोर टाइम्स टाउ बी डी सो इफ यू डिवाइड बाय द फाइव ऑन एंड टेक इट ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इट विल बी एल डी अपॉन फाइव विच इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट फैक्टर विच इज नोन एज डेवलपमेंट लेंथ फैक्टर हैंस द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस इज सी डेवलपमेंट लेंथ फैक्टर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव द डिजाइन बॉन्ड स्ट्रेस इन एम पी ए फॉर अ टॉर स्टील बार इन टेंशन यूज विथ एम थर्टी कॉन्क्रीट विल बी ए वन पॉइंट फाइव बी टू पॉइंट फोर सी वन पॉइंट फोर एंड डी टू पॉइंट वन नो अकॉर्डिंग टू द टेबल गिवन इन आई एस फोर फिफ्टी सिक्स टाउ बी डी इज गिवन फॉर द प्लेन बार्स इन टेंशन नाउ हियर द बार इज इन टेंशन बट इट इज अ टॉर स्टील बार सो फॉर अ टॉर स्टील बार द वैल्यू गिवन इन द टेबल इज टू बी इनक्रीज बाय सिक्सटी परसेंट एंड डेयर फोर इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई दैट वैल्यू बाय वन पॉइंट सिक्स यू विल गेट द वैल्यू एज टू पॉइंट फोर हैंस द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस इज बी टू पॉइंट फोर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स द डिजाइन बॉन्ड स्ट्रेस इन एम पी ए फॉर अ माइल स्टील बार इन कॉम्परेशन यूज विथ एम थर्टी कॉन्क्रीट विल बी ए वन पॉइंट फाइव बी टू पॉइंट फोर सी थ्री एंड डी वन पॉइंट एट सेवन फाइव अगेन फ्रॉम द सेम टेबल इन आई एस फोर फिफ्टी सिक्स फॉर एम थर्टी द वैल्यू इज वन पॉइंट फाइव बट दैट इज द वैल्यू फॉर प्लेन बार्स इन टेंशन Here also it is mild steel bar, but it is in compression. So that value is to be increased by 25 percent. So if you multiply that 1.5 by 1.25, you will get the value as 1.875. Hence the correct answer of this is D 1.875 newton per mm square. Thank you.